not be the favorites in this matchup, but it's probably going to be a pretty close one. This is a squad that has gone up against the likes of Nova Esports and defeated them. In fact, in the qualifier that they got the furthest, they only lost out to Nishang Dance, a team that wound up going on with the golden ticket. So uh, HT Family certainly has a lot of fans. That's how they got the wildcard vote, and they have been preparing hard for many, many months to get here and now. But the first attacker is going to be on the other side of the battlefield. Alternate attacks is Vale is coming on in early with some zaps to set up for this mass drag attack. A little bit of a hybrid here, the flybrid we like to call it, with some super minions soaring in up top. The flybrid is something that uh, we really don't get to see too much of, and I'm surprised to see Vala bringing it through, but we don't get to see the super minions coming in with it. He uses them specifically for the funnel and coming through with the drag attacks. Now, while his favorite attack strategy is the Electro Lalo, he's coming through with something he does very well, and that is these dragons. Great path coming in straight to the town hall. The Zap Quake opened up what he needed, but we're going to have to see the Warden ability reserved for coming through the town hall section here. Yeah, that is a gigantic chunk carved out of this base, and if you've been living under a rock for the past few years, you might not know that the first star is earned by scoring 50% destruction, the second by tearing down the town hall, and the third and final coveted star that is so desperately needed to get victory in these tight wars, only by 100% overall damage. Vale wrecks the town hall, and those mass drags are going to get some loon support along the sides. Two heroes coming in for some additional funneling here. He's really great on time right now, Lady B. A minute and 40 left but these troops are going to take a lot of damage from scatter shots and a multi-target inferno and that archer queen on the backside. I think they've got it though. What do you think? This is such a classic drag loon attack. Vala taking advantage of the layout of this base, of the shape he could path, the, or the path he could shape out of it. And look at this. We've got a swag queen ability coming in just absolutely overpowered with these dragons. This is absolutely incredible and just what we would expect expect from alternate attacks coming through in the world championship finals but a love that we get to see the players here that we get to see what's going on through their minds um earlier we saw asked just kind of taking a deep breath now we have boom ready to the plate ready to go bringing in the zap quake lalo hoping for a little bit better of a turnout and again you get to see the opener where he has not gone for the clan castle but he's opened up the pathing because he wants to get the push coming in and he has an ice golem to do the tanking since he knows he's going to have to contend with this yeti's looking to take on that multi-targeting inferno doesn't quite get it though Many pro players consider Boom to be the best in the world. This alternate attack superstar is ready to clutch the triple when his team needs it the most to stay ahead against an HT family nibbling at their heels, coming up close time and again with mid-90s percentage. The Archer Queen stabs in deep and fires away at an Eagle Artillery. Crucial target eliminated for Boom as a double Laloon push will be coming in shortly. He's left the Town Hall up soon, so I I'm expecting him to come in from that top right position around the two o'clock. That'll give him two easy air defenses near the outside walls of this space to go after. I love the combination. We've got the queen working together with the royal champ. We've got the clan castle down, but he starts off. He knows time can be of the essence with these Lalos. Gets a direct push into the town hall, which means we get to see an early tome ability. But he's bringing in the freezes. These scatter shots are going to be his biggest threat coming in along with the queen. Now, the warden ability has been used. We still have the headhunters we have to worry about, but he has to focus on the ground targeting defenses and make sure there's nothing going to harm these headhunters so they can get in and do their job. He drops another breeze to shut down that scatter shot, and that last haste spell is deployed. A massive wave of balloons sweeps over the last remaining defenses of the base, and boom, with over a minute left for cleanup, seems to have it in the bag. Poor defensive Barbarian King sitting confused, holding aloft his champion sword, but there's no way he can stab away at the attackers flying high. Balloons, lava pups, minions, wrecking the last remaining buildings of this base to score the trip Boom holds his title strong and will remain aloft ahead, high and above the clouds. Alternate attacks get their second triple of this war. Alternate attacks is not messing around in this one. They are here for business. They want to pick up the, the championship. They want to get this done, and this is a promising start for that.
Two stars, it just really doesn't seem possible. Ast is going to be up next, and if he manages to get a two star, it is all over for HT Family, Woody. The hometown hero, the Finnish finalizer, Ast from Alternate Attacks will send in the last blow. If Alternate Attacks gets the triple here, just like you mentioned, Banks, there is no chance for HT Family to make the comeback happen. Even a two star here would be decisive. Alternate Attacks just looking to get that 12 star up on the board to get out of reach to HT Family. This should be an easy walk away win for Ast. I would say an easy walk away win, but I never discount things going wrong in, you know, in these types of situations when a lot is on the line and you can have good defense, but the safe one star is easy here. Picking up percentage is the other way to go, and he's got this direct line with the wall wrecker heading in to the town hall. We will see the clan castle coming out in the radius as well, so he needs to take that on, but look at the shape of this path. This is so narrowed out for the loons. He's taken He's taking a safe approach for himself with the Zapquake Lalo here for the two star. Yeah, no reason to take any risks. When you're the last attacker, you can have a plan B to get the easy two to seal the deal for victory. Ash from Alternate Attacks grabs the Town Hall, and at 30%, he just needs 20 more to guarantee victory and advancement in this double elimination bracket. HT Family holding their breath, hoping that something just happens to go wrong for Ash, but it looks not likely at all. With the Loons and Lava Hounds down, Ash is ready to seize the crown and keep his team up on top. The Balloons are doing business here in the left side corner. And with the 50% two-star, alternate attacks have guaranteed victory in this war, Lady B. Ah, this is a great victory for them from the bottom to the top in the World Championship Finals, getting their first win in this first match. This has got to be exciting for them. This has got to be exhilarating. I know for one, I am super excited to see this. And we've seen a great match from HT Family, but Ast just putting that final nail in the coffin here. He is not accepting a two star. He is walking away this day with the three star saying we are done. We're going to see you guys tomorrow. Tic tac toe for the triple finish. Ast walks away in style on a victory lap across this base, picking up a total of 13 stars for alternate attacks. They came into this war as the favorites, and that is how they will advance, moving on with a decisive lead. Well, I think they probably need to, especially given the fact that this early on, you definitely do not want to fall behind. And if they were to fall even further behind on percentage, then you are starting to get towards the halfway mark. And that's when it's even harder, obviously, it, to turn things around. Here we go with Michael DP coming in with a Queen Charge hybrid of his own. Going to push this Queen nice and toward, it looks like he's going to go towards the Town Hall from the way that he started this off with that Yeti Bomb. Gonna go ahead and Ooh. get this clan castle dealt with against the Headhunters out, but that Super Minion still remaining right there in the middle, Judo. Yeah, the CC actually split, so he had to use the Freeze Spell on the Headhunters. Now has the poison for the Super Minions, but keep an eye on that Queen. She has to get the Super Minions down fast, and it looks like she will indeed do that. Now, Michael DP did tell us that the most important thing for success is being able to keep relaxed. That must be a difficult thing, Bash, when the war has started how it is. And this is the World Finals, remember? One million dollar prize pool. This is it, final weekend. I don't know how these players can handle the pressure. My heart would be racing, my fingers would be shaking, but these guys are pros, pros, and they know how to handle it. Here comes that super wall breaker, barely getting that town hall compartment open. Oh my goodness, with just the slightest sliver to get in there, Queen will take down the single and she's gonna have free reign at the town hall, Judo. You know? Got a little bit of fortunate with the super wall breaker getting the wall compartment, but then instantly a little bit unfortunate losing two healers to black bombs. But the queen looks like she has enough health. It's really if she is going to be able to survive when she gets towards the enemy queen. So the ability will have to be perfect. An early grand warning ability though to the top right of your screen will help the hybrid through the scatter shot and to the eagle. That is a couple of major splash down early. There's still a lot left in this base though, Bash. 
King funneling the bottom side and these hogs or miners are running right through. I like the way this is looking for Michael DP. Just needs to get back through that scatter shot. This is strong, Judo. Ooh, yes, it certainly is. The Queen back to full health. Still has the ability. Royal Champion has her ability. And it looks like Michael DP is going to get the first three star of this war. Put existence in front despite the percentage. It is stars that matter. And it's back to Dark as Muzhan now. Michael DP coming up and answering the call, knocking it out of the park with this epic Queen Charge Hybrid. Amazing value on that charge, and that worked to perfection, Banks. He's able to just get one or two more of those defenses. No way he doesn't three-star that, but so unfortunate. And we're going to have Alma Lin looking to push the lead even further for existence. Still trailing on percentage, but remember, it always matters about the stars, Judo Sloth. It certainly does, and let's face it, Dark as Muzhan have enough talent to get back in this. They beat MKMA and Tribe Gaming in the semis and finals of the qualifier. They won, and they won the King of the Castle tournament with a perfect war over the Queen Walkers. So they just need to keep their confidence up and hope their bases can defend. And it is Al Mualin of existence. Coming in with some lightning spells and some earthquakes to weaken down and take out that eagle artillery. Love to see that. And we're going to have 10 dragons with this attack. A lot of spells committed to the, the zap there. But with 10 dragons, if he can get a good funnel and a good path set, these dragons will push right through the middle of the base. Let's see what he's bringing to the table. These sneaky goblins are going to look to finish off this storage. Yeah, it's a very surgical and interesting start. He did get the defending royal champion with the lightning spells. Did want to use the bullets to just snipe off the air defense, which he is going to get to relatively early. It won't do a lot of damage, but it has got one of the dragons around about 33% of its health off. So that is a big difference that Al Mualan didn't want to face. Dragons do have pretty good pathing to the rest of the air defense, but he's going to have to try and get through the center of the base is the main issue that I see. Look at this interesting move, bringing in the king and queen towards the bottom of the base. The king and queen will handle the clan castle by themselves. The dragons get the town hall down to secure that first star. The warden's eternal tome going to protect all the dragons and the balloon. Free spell goes down on that multi-target inferno and freezes the queen. This is looking nice. He's still got that royal champion in hand as well. Just a couple of dragons are in the center, but it is enough to get the multi-target Inferno down. The Stone Slammer really helping from the north of the base. Stuck in the Tornado Trap now. If they can get the Stone, the scatter shot down, sorry, over to this bottom area, it will definitely help the heroes as they come through. It's very difficult to call, but with two scatter shots smashing into the dragons, they are going down fast, Bash. The Queen still has her ability. That Royal Champion is going to work and target the Expo and target that... Other scatter shot. Oh no, she gets oh. held up by the enemy king. We do have one dragon on the scatter. If he can get this scatter down, oh, Judo, this one's gonna be over. Alma Lin's gonna get the three star for existence. What an attack, Banks the dragon. The sigh of relief was breathed out by the whole existence team as that three star comes in. You gotta think that first attack, they just felt like something was off there because they're coming out strong with their next two. We're gonna have Kartik coming in with a zap drag of his own. Eight lightning spells and an earthquake. Let's see where he looks to direct these lightning spells. Perhaps get out a scatter shot and then maybe a zap earthquake combo in one of the singles. This will be interesting to see, Judo. Mm, yeah, I think maybe the clan castle more to provide pathing for the dragons, but we will have to wait and see. I think you're right there. It is going to be one of the scatters rotating around the center. The oh, yes, because they're in range. Okay, wow. So he just weakened one of them, but managed to rotate around the other one to take down the Inferno Tower of the Shield. Interesting. So he's just setting up some amazing pathing here. He didn't get down that other scatter. I, I misspoke there, but it's weakened and he has great pathing set up for these dragons. I like what Kartik is doing, the surgical lightning spells. That's gonna set up really, really nicely for these dragons as we're seeing these sneaky goblins come in to take out some of these high hit point buildings on the outside of the base so the dragons aren't gonna get held up on those storages. I like it. 
Yeah, one of the advantages of this attack is it doesn't really need a super troop to help support the air portion because you have dragons and balloons. So the sneaky goblins can take down the high hit point storages. And what that really does is pass the dragons, but also mean they can get to the defenses. You might notice the ground expos, but with a lot of HP that they have, they can actually distract for the other defenses to do a lot of damage onto the dragons. It is looking good though for Kartek as the town hall goes down and he's looking to continue the push. The Warden's ability protects, and here we go with the Stone Slammer getting to that air defense. We have one air defense remaining. Well, check this out. We get the scatter shot and some single target infernos tucked away behind some storage. It's going to be a tough run for these dragons to get to those singles. Yeah, and that's exactly my point in terms of using the sneaky goblins for them on the outside, because what you will see now is the dragons take a little bit of time to get through them, and that just allows the single behind to do work. Now, with the queen, uh, king's ability and the queen's ability, he can just push through the outside. He's got enough to get this done, Bash. He really needs to get the air defense before the dragons get in range, though. The queen finally targeting the air defense. That dragon does take a little bit of damage, um, but it's still standing. That eagle is just pounding away, but luckily it's only hitting that one lone dragon up top with the queen's ability. This is looking it. really good for Kartik. I think he's got it. The archer tower is distracted by the king. He still has the queen's ability. Dragons onto the eagle. This is exactly what Targus Mazan needed. Their opening three star. Finally, they hit the mark and they need to hope that they have their best bases ready to hold off existence. What a great attack from Kartik. Kartek, especially when they are whoever they are going to be facing tomorrow. What a surprise here. Rigo Torres going in and check this out. We got more witches. Rigo, known for his Lalo attacks, going with the Zap. This is kind of a risky play. He's going to have to go right in towards the town hall as they just really need two stars to win. But look at this, getting both scatter shots down. I like that play right there for Rigo. Getting the scatters down, all he has to do is two star this base and existence moves on to tomorrow. It is huge because the three Inferno Towers are all set to single. And with the Mass Witches, if you're trying to use this, it is all about splash damage. So the main defenses now are the Town Hall and the Eagle. But I think Rigor, knowing the position they are in, will be pushing direct into the Town Hall, forgetting about the Eagle a little bit. I still think he's got a good shot at the three stars here though, Bash. Being able to get both scatter shots out, with that minimal spell support is massive for a witch attack. I love the mass witch attacks, but having an extra rage in hand and the poison spell is going to be massive for this attack for Rigo as he's going to use his king and the king may actually be able to get all the way to the town hall by himself. We do see that inferno dragon coming out of the clan castle, but look at all of those skeletons spawning. Wow, that is a skelly army for sure. He is going to have to deal with the clan castle troops here, but interestingly, without any jump spells, he's going to rely on the super wall breakers, busting up the compartments and allowing the witches in. There goes one of them, gets him access to the clan castle area or within reach of it with the witches being a ranged troops. Here comes the next one. That will provide them even further access. And with the royal champion coming in from the left-hand side, he just has to sweep this left area and make sure to finish off strong for existence. He's still got the Warden's ability in hand. That is going to come in so nice to finish this one off. Rigo already has the war secured for his squad to move on to tomorrow, but he wants to finish it off with a three-star and put up that 13-star performance and let these other teams know that existence is here to put on a show. Check it out. Oh my goodness, we just have a few defenses left, you know, and Rigo's going to triple this base. Such an interesting play style here from Existence. Really switching it up from what they are comfortable with and making sure to bring home the victory. Also, it looks like they will be putting up 13 stars, which is exactly what we've seen by alternate attacks. So the bar getting set high into the finals already with 13 stars. And it looks like Existence, like you said, really wanted to put on a show and they are cruising into tomorrow.
Narcus Muzano go on to play in the lower bracket elimination match a little bit later today, but Existence going to move on to... We've seen so far, and uh, like I've said before, Existence will continue their journey tomorrow so they can kind of relax for now. But to see again how they did it, I'm going to hand you over to our man at the Telestrator. It's Carbon Finn. Thank you, Banks. Yes, we're going to take a look at Michael DP coming in with the classic hybrid. What does he decide to do? Well, there's kind of two versions of hybrid you could do. You can go with the Battle Blimp, which is what he goes here, or with the Siege Barracks. And what is he going with the Blimp? Well, there's a couple objectives that we want to look at. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and notice what he's trying to do. He's trying to grab a section out of this base, which is that single target Inferno. You really want to help protect that queen when you charge her through, but also you want to pull the clan and castle troops. Super important that you're able to do this so that you get that value so the queen can deal with that CC on the outside of the base. So what is the next objective after you protect the queen by taking out a single target Inferno? And, and pulling the clan castle. Well, you wanna try your best to get your queen to go for the town hall. If you can get the queen to go for the town hall, then you can use your warden's ability for the hybrid in the middle of the base. So now the queen, she's going to be responsible for charging her way towards this town hall and help take that down. Notice what he's doing on the outside. He's using the Yeti to help clear the outside of the buildings and then it's going to help force the queen into the middle. And luckily he is able to just barely, we'll keep an eye on it, get that super wall break to open up the town hall compartment right here. The Yeti's going in. The queen is taking her time through this charge. Finally, Teslas, which is really nice to deal with the Teslas on the outside side and here we go here is that super wall break it is just barely with that death damage there taking out that outside wall to open it up so now what's the next step after the queen takes out that town hall now you need to use your king to help clear the funnel for the hybrid for the miners the whole point for the king the funnel is so he goes out here so in between the king and and where you sent that blimp, which was originally right on that top section. Now it sets up a beautiful funnel for that hybrid right in between. And you're noticing he is using that Warren ability through the Eagle shots and the Scatter shot, which is a beautiful use of the ability. And what you want to do after you drop that ward, hit that Warden ability, you're going to want to drop the heals after one another. So you either want to use that Warden ability really early in the raid with the hybrid, or you want to use it and the next step, you don't want to use it at the end because you want to protect as many of the troops as possible. He didn't need that rage for the queen in the middle. He used it for the hybrid portion and absolutely crushed the base. Michael DP, beautiful use of the blimp into the hybrid attack here. So hopefully everyone watching at home can take a few little steps from Michael DP and existence and they will be advancing as well. But man, unbelievable performance. Now we're going to be getting ready for Vitang versus 11 original. Hey,